Hey guys, so I'm on here because I was talking to the Lord and the Lord told me to tell you guys about us, meaning what me and him have, um, the relationship that I have with him and that everyone can have that, um, Yes, we are all unique and special and different in our own ways, but that's just it. We're all unique and special in our own different ways, and and he loves us all equally and differently. It's like I tell people about my kids. You know, some people talk about favorites and stuff like that. I'm like, I love my kids equally, but differently. They're different little people. Um, and that's the only way I could ever think to describe it. And so I'm going to tell you guys just some things because I know a lot of you ask, you know, how do you hear from the Lord? How do you know it's the Lord? And people ask me these things in comments here and there. And I just want to share about us, about me and the Lord. Um, and I know the Lord wants that too well, because he told me that. Um, so just to get started... Now, I never used to like talking about sad stuff because I'm like, oh, I don't want to be a mood killer. <laughs> um, but I'm growing a, a courage to talk about sad stuff and not, A, not really worry so much about what other think. B, not look for sympathy, you know, with the victim mentality that I used to have a long time ago. Um, and C, enjoy it. Enjoy talking about because it's uh, there's so many testimonies, you know, so many parts to my testimony with the Lord. And it is beautiful how he brought me from darkness, from sadness to light and is every day more and more. And so to start off, um, the first thing that came to my mind when the Lord told me to talk about us was the voice in my head, my whole life, my whole life, I never had a good voice in my head ever. And that's not to say that no one ever spoke loving words to me or no one ever complimented me. I had, you know, some loving words spoken to me and I had some compliments spoken to me. Um, but of course, when the bad outweighs the good, you get more of the bad. And that becomes, you know, and especially in your developmental years, um, that's what gets burned in your head you know, what you're around a lot, if you're around a lot of negativity, misery, uh, yelling, harsh punishments, um, abuse, uh, you know, all different things. And then on top of that, you know, and, and I believe that all of us believers go through this and have gone through this is the emotional and spiritual rape that we experience. And it does a number on us being emotionally and spiritually raped um, by the enemy and by our own flesh, uh, flesh, uh, wicked parts of our flesh and wicked parts of other people's flesh that are projected on us. And so I was always in turmoil. I was always, I was depressed for like as far back as I can remember. Um, and you know, I, I battled suicidal depression for years and years and years. It was what I knew. It, <clears throat> I, you know, I even went through a point where I was like, you know, looking up worldly things and putting labels on myself, man-made labels of man-made studies that they've done where they've put names to these things and said, well, this is an issue in this area and this is an issue in that area of your uh, brain and <clears throat> I believed all that instead of believing the word. I wasn't heavy into the word. I wasn't reading the word, you know, where the battles we fight are battles of the spirit, not of the flesh. You know, when Jesus came and he rebuked evil spirits out of people, I mean, he rebuked epilepsy out of people. Now, nowadays, people would say, well, that's a health condition. No, any evil ailment 
uh, condition, it's all from the enemy. So that's something people don't really understand. I mean, even blindness. The Lord healed the blind. He rebuked people who nowadays you, people would consider, um, you know, bipolar. He rebuked wicked spirits that would on and off possess these people. I know that makes people uncomfortable because in the world we're in, you know, we've been so long brainwashed and so long sabotaged that we've, you know, oh, I've been to the doctors. I've seen what they show in MRIs and brain scans and studies scientists have done on your brains and, and you've believed that and taken that as your truth that those things, um, you know, are specifically health things with man-made labels and not battles of the spirit, not battles, you know, of evil, evil spirits. So, uh, I, for some, I guess the Lord wanted me to speak on that. Um, so yeah, I was one of those people. I fell into that and... You know, I, I was just always living like there's something wrong with me, there's something wrong with me, there's something wrong with me. Not there's something evil clinging to me. There's something evil, you know, rooting inside of me that needs to be plucked out. That is, excuse me, separate from me. It may be rooted in me, but it's not. How do I explain this, Lord? Please help me. But it's not the way God made me. He made us to be whole with him. And we accumulate all of these things. We accumulate these, these bitter roots that need to be plucked out and weeded out. And, you know, we have a mouth and we don't use it. We don't pray enough, rebuke enough. Uh, and we're in a war. You know, we walk around casual, like um, like we're just moving from one moment to the next. Oh, I'm just going to get some lunch. I'm just going to the grocery store. I'm just going to the post office. I'm just driving down the block. I'm just walking from my bedroom in the morning to the bathroom. And we do all these little life things so carelessly and we forget that we're in a war and that we need to be in prayer at all times and in our armor at all times. And I didn't understand any of that, I didn't have that. And what the Lord did, you know, is he pulled me out of that, he led me to his truth. And I I, I prayed to him one day, I, I don't remember the specific day and I don't remember the specific year. <clears throat> I just remember I prayed to him and I said, Lord, please give me the motivation to, to read your Bible because I don't care enough. Like, I was just straight honest with him. Like, I'm, I don't feel motivated to read your Bible. I don't even want to. Can you help me? Like, I, I had to meet him at the absolute lowest. And, you know, he started putting that hunger in me. And I had downloaded the Bible app, and I didn't read it. I read it here and there, and then I wouldn't read it for days or weeks, sometimes even months. And I turn almost all the notifications off on my phone because I can't stand hearing my phone going off all the time. Um, but I left the notifications up for my Bible app. And every day, the verse of the day would pop up. So whether I liked it or not, I was reading a verse every day. And then it turned into, I want to read more on that verse. Where does that verse lead to? And wow, that verse like applies to what I'm going through right now. You know, not knowing that the Lord was calling me through his word. And... So it just, you know, that's kind of how it started. And then I started talking to the Lord, like a real conversation, talking to him and asking him for help with things, which that hasn't really changed. But the, the voice in my head has changed. The more I was reading his word and still read his word, and the more I reflect on it, and the more I talk to him, the more I pray to him, give thanks to him, ask him questions and listen for him, 
the more I hear him and the more I hear him clearly to the point where now I know his voice. And yeah, sometimes I get attacked. I'm like, Lord, is that you saying me this? Or am I thinking this? Or is it that? And I got to rebuke and pray and get into the word and get, you know, get my life together. <laughs> but um, the voice in my head has changed. And again, that's not to discount attacks. I still get attacked. Uh, fleshly thoughts still go through my mind. The enemy still um, attacks me with evil, wicked thoughts that I have to cast out. But when I go to the Lord, I hear his voice of love, of encouragement. Even when he's correcting me, like he doesn't belittle me. You know, before I really got heavy into my walk with the Lord, um, growing up Catholic, I, uh, I saw God as just straight wrath. And if I made one mistake, that's it. I'm going to hell. And I was afraid of him. I was afraid to talk to him. I felt unclean. I was living in shame and condemnation and guilt. <clears throat> and, um, legalism. And you don't want to go from one extreme to the other. Um, it, Jesus is not about legalism. And uh, he's not about full grace without repentance either. Jesus is about that healthy balance. You know, in scripture, he tells us to follow his commandments, love God with all of our heart and soul, love our neighbor as ourselves. The whole Bible, he's teaching us how to follow him, not how to just kind of chill, rely on his grace, do whatever we want and uh you know expect to be saved no to know him to know him is to read about him to learn about him to speak with him to develop an intimate relationship with him and to follow him meaning to do what he does and he tells us follow commandments he tells us to repent and so when i really learned these things and i learned how the holy spirit works through things and through through situations, through people, and I felt the Holy Spirit, I was like, oh, I want more, I want more. And um, my addictions to worldly thinkings, to worldly things, to people that are perishable, that, you know, it, it's absolutely ridiculous that we put our trust in human beings that are perishable. It's about as ridiculous as putting our trust in a material object here. Everything here is perishable. And I, I, my addictions shifted to the Lord, to him, to his Holy Spirit, to wanting to just suck everything from him and deplete myself of me and just be so filled with him. And I seek that every day and I repent every day. Um, and I know there's people out there that say you don't need to repent. I, I disagree. I disagree. We were taught about repentance. And one thing that needs to be understood is God is a relational God. <clears throat> he, when you're in a relationship with someone, you hurt them. You apologize. If you don't, that's something you need to work on. So, it's the same thing with God. When we slip up or we hurt him, we apologize. Now, we know that there's forgiveness waiting at the end of that. But repentance is to change your ways. So any Christian out there saying, you know, you don't need to repent, or you repent once and that's it, that's not true. Tell me, have you repented once? Have you changed your life once, one time, and you have never slipped up since you've never thought a wicked thought since about another person you've never slipped up and said a cuss word you've never been in a situation or a conversation with another human being where you did not love your neighbor we fall often and we continue to repent we we continue to change we continue to i fall I get back up. 
I hurt, I hurt the Lord in this little way. I'm sorry, Lord. I acknowledge that I did that. That's what repentant, living in a state of repentance, the Holy Spirit lets you know when you've, when you've done this. So you know, ah, oh, that wasn't good. That's not of the Lord. I'm sorry, Lord. Get back up. And it's a, con it's a constant battle. If it was a one and done, we wouldn't be, there'd be no work here left to be done. There, there'd be no reason for us to, we would be completely finished and in heaven, but we are unfinished while we are here on earth. So I know there's gonna be people who are upset about that because um, they're either one extreme or the other. They're either full legalism um, with no grace um, or they're all grace and, you know, and no balance, no repentance. And if that's how you feel, my page is not the page for you. Um, I'm not afraid to upset people with that. And I'm not going to argue with you in the comments. So if you argue, you're arguing with yourself because I'm not going to respond. So going on my relationship with the Lord, he, um, he teaches me things, you know, the more I cry out to him, uh, repent and die each day to the flesh, dying, every day I'm dying, and this is good, I'm dying and repenting, changing every day, and talking to him, developing that intimate relationship with him, crying out to him, smiling, giving thanks, whether things are easy or hard, the more I hear him, the more clearly I hear him, and uh, he moves me up. He moves me up and and he brings me up into new seasons where, you know, first it was milk, then baby food, then meat. And things can seem a lot harder when you get into the meat phase. Because when you're in the milk and the baby food, he's giving he's just pouring things out so easy. <clears throat> he's pouring things out so easy. Once you start getting into the meat phase, you have to remember more. Because he, he's always there for us, but he's not going to, Lord, please help me explain this. He's not going to kind of be that wheelchair, be that crutch uh, for everything. He puts us on our own two feet and is like, okay, I taught you. Now it's your job to remember and if you slip hard enough and call me, yes, I will help you up. But you know all the resources. You know now to go to the word. You know now to give thanks and rejoice in everything. You know, you know, to apply the word in your life. You know my voice. You know how I work in your life from the things I've shown you. So you know where to look. So he puts us on our feet and we have to do a bit more. He doesn't make it as easy for us as when we're on milk and baby food. And if anything, it's an honor. It's an honor because the Lord is trusting us. It's just like with our kids when we're like, we send them out and you know, oh, you're 12, 13 years old now. Yes, you can walk to the store up at the corner by yourself. Uh, don't go anywhere else go straight there and come back. Don't spend money on extra things. Only spend money on this, that, and the third and come right back. So we're giving them, you know, these, this is the guide and this is where you're going and come back when you're done. And I'm trusting you with this freedom. And so we send them off. Now it's a little harder because on the way they're gonna, they're gonna be tempted. Ooh, I wanna get this candy. Ooh, I wanna, ooh, there's something shiny down that block. Mom won't see, I just wanna kinda walk around the block and check that out real quick. And you have to decide, no, I'm gonna do what mom told me to do. Just like with us, no, I'm gonna do what Jesus told me to do. And if I fall, it's because I fell off track. So, these are things that, you know, I'm learning with the Lord and, um, you know, when you get into the meat phase, sometimes we can fall into, you know, 
the enemy's trap of discouragement. Like, ah, oh, you know, I'm asking for this and that and I'm not seeing it. Or I feel like I'm in a dark fog. I can't see anything. And, but we know our job is to remember. You know what I mean? So there's that. The Lord, um, the Lord has changed so much in my life and helped me with so much and I know his voice I know his voice from his word I know him I got to know him through his word and then I got to know him personally in the spirit I go to him in the spirit I meet him in a quiet place I talk to him and I'll tell you guys again how I do that I rebuke, I clear the air around me because I want a clean space for me in the Lord. I rebuke and clear the air around me, all evil spirits away from me in the pits of hell in Jesus' mighty name. And then I humble myself in my flesh. I repent, I apologize, Lord, for any ways that I may have hurt you or sinned against you, myself, or others today. Please forgive me. Please continue to renew me. And I go to my humble place in my flesh where I recognize how, you know, weak I am without him and how small I am and how big and great he is. And then I go into my high place in my spirit, my, my confident, my God confidence in my spirit where although my flesh is not worthy because my flesh is wretched, my spirit is yours. You created me. You created this spirit inside of me. My spirit is connecting to your Holy Spirit. And you made me worthy when you died on the cross for me. When you called on me and I answered back. When you chose me and I chose you back. The relationship, you know? It's not just him just chasing us and us running. Or us just chasing, well, there is no us chasing him and him running away because he's awesome like that. But it's not a one way, it's a relationship. You know, you, Lord, you chose me and, and I choose you and I'm seeking you. I go to my God confidence place in my spirit. I go low in the flesh and I go high in the spirit, you know, and your word says all of these things, says that, you know, if I believe I'm saved and I do believe Jesus, I believe in you and what you did at the cross for me. And when you tell me that I am fearfully and wonderfully made, I believe that. And when you said that I can put on my armor and that I am free, I am free with you, I believe that. That I do have a helmet of salvation. That I do have a breastplate of righteousness that I can put on me and a belt of truth that I can put on me. That with your word, my feet can be ready to share the gospel and I do believe these things Lord and I do believe Psalms 91 and I do believe Psalms 23 that I can go sit beside still waters and be filled with you and at rest in peace and that you call me you call me beside still waters I believe all these wonderful things that you give me to protect me through battle to bring me to rest in peace with you that I am yours that I am adopted into your heavenly royal eternal kingdom so that's where I go to meet the Lord those are all the things that I do those are all the things that he has led me to to where I now have an intimate relationship with him to where I know his voice I am him, his sheep and I know his voice. And his voice is more often the voice in my head now than all the horrible things I grew up, you know, thinking and hearing and sitting in turmoil my whole life. And that's us. That's me and my Yeshua. And I know you guys hear this a lot. I know, you know, I know you guys hear Jesus loves you. 
but really, you know, stop and take that in. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves me. The Lord tells me all the time, shame, condemnation, and guilt is not for me. He carried that curse. He carried that curse to the cross, died with that. And because I believe in him, none of that is for me. None of that is for me. And he loves me. And regardless of all the horrible things I've thought about myself, and all the horrible things you guys may have thought about yourself, he loves you. He is pure and perfect. And you are a sinner. And I am a sinner. And he loves me. And he loves you. It's mind-blowing how much he loves. And, and when we doubt him or when we worry, when we get so afraid. I mean, it's one thing to, you know, we fear God. We, re we fear meaning we respect him. We don't want to hurt him, you know. We want to be obedient to him. But when you fear in the sense of worry and want to hide in shame, remember, he loves more than we could ever love. And if he loves you with an everlasting love and me with an everlasting love, what makes you think that you're going to go to him and he's going to turn you away? What makes you hear Jesus loves you and receive that so casually like yeah Jesus loves me I pray we humble ourselves and never casually receive Jesus loves you I pray whether we cry physical tears or our hearts cry but I, I pray that either way we cry one way or another when we hear Jesus loves us because his depth is just so amazing and I appreciate that and it's good to be appreciative to live in a state of appreciation of the simple things and the huge things like his deep love so there's that and also that's right Lord thank you Lord Jesus is chasing you if you're watching this right now, Jesus is chasing you. If you're seeking him, running to him, you know, you feel this pain inside like, oh, I just, I need to get closer, Lord. I need to get closer to the Lord. I'm not, you know, my life is a mess or I'm a mess. I, you know, I'm, I struggle with bitterness or resentment or whatever you struggle with, whatever you struggle with, and you know it's wrong because the Holy Spirit has convicted you that it's wrong and you just want Jesus so bad you don't want to be left behind you want to be raptured up you want to be with him forever he's chasing you and you're chasing him and keep chasing him keep reading the word and if you feel like for a moment that you don't feel motivated enough or you can't remember ask Lord you can ask Lord to help you Lord please help me to be motivated to read, read your word I'm, I'm slipping I'm backsliding in this area or I'm um I'm forgetting please help me remember um you know stuff like that or Lord please call me to what you want me to read I ask the Lord all the time he reads me to random verses throughout the day and it's always so wonderful I mean so relevant so wonderful so that's us that's me and Jesus and I pray that, you know, if you already have that relationship with him, then you know you can relate. And it's just, you know, we can connect and that's wonderful. And, and uh, you know, if you don't quite have that or you're not sure if you're hearing him or you feel like he's being silent, God's not silent. He's quiet. He's soft-spoken. Um, but he's, he's not silent. You gotta have faith. You gotta believe. When you call out to him, expect him to respond to you. I know that might sound a little heavy to some of you, but you gotta remember that he is our God. He is our leader. And we are his creation. And he wants a relationship with us. Therefore, expect him to respond to you. So, that's all I got. I love you guys. 
and rejoice, rejoice in everything. Rejoice, 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 rejoice. Go look at today's verse of the day. All right, God bless. Love you guys. Bye.